Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. So, a lot of you people have been asking me why do you name yourself the cross-site scripting rat? Well, it's because cross-site scripting is one of my favorite types of vulnerabilities actually. Cross-site scripting might seem simple, but a lot of people seem to confuse it with HTML injections. And cross-site scripting can come from HTML injections, of course, but it doesn't have to. Uh, it really depends on where your attack factor is being reflected in what context. So an example of an HTML attack would be image source equals X on error equals alert. Sorry for that, by the way. When we try to pop an alert by inserting a broken image into a web page, that's an HTML injection, which leads to a cross-site scripting. We can however also break out of JavaScript directly sometimes and execute malicious code that way. So this is where we want to start looking for cross-site scripting. A lot of hackers will look for cross-site scripting attack values that are clearly reflected on the page, but we also want to look for values reflected in the JavaScript code. This amazing hackers is why it's so damn important to read the JavaScript code. This is where real hackers are born in my opinion because it's really important to read every single function and understand what it does to see how we can break out of those reflected values. Now please do note that this value can be reflected by being stored somewhere and being recalled as well. We're going to talk mostly about reflected cross-site scripting in this episode but stored cross-site scripting will come on later of course. Now reflected cross-site scripting occurs when a value that we pass on in a get parameter via the URL that is gets reflected onto the website either in JavaScript code or in HTML code. We need to make sure the value occurs from a get value because uh, we need to be able to send our victim a URL when he or she is logged into our target and they can execute the malicious code. So how do we test for this? It's pretty simple actually. It may seem like it's hard, but it's mostly quite a lot of work. So we need to test every parameter that's reflected, both in the HTML code and in the JavaScript code. It may seem obvious, but it's not as obvious as it first seems. We actually need to read that full JavaScript code and get the values that are reflected there. Same for the HTML code and make sure to get reflected values on error pages, for example, as well. So you're going to have to think outside of the box pretty hard on this one. <clears throat> Use some general attack strict vector strategy that we've gone over on the channel quite a lot before. So I'm going to link to a lot of videos there in the description below. And if you really don't want to read the JavaScript, here's a methodology that you can follow. Every single parameter that you find, test it, enter a random alphanumeric value into it, See if that value gets reflected somewhere in the source code of the page or the JavaScript code. Determine the reflection context, so whether that's HTML or JavaScript. Test a candidate payload to make sure you adjust your payload to the code that is being reflected into, so that's the JavaScript or the HTML. And then test alternative payloads as well, if the first one didn't work, like URL encoded values, double encoded values, base64 encoded values that you pass into an eval function. Uh, think outside of the box here, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. And if you find a working payload, make sure that you test it in other browsers as well. And up your severity, guys. There's a couple of things you can do here. You can perform some basic JavaScript functions a locked in user can do that might be damaging to your target. You can view some of the user's information and send a GET request to your own web server with the parameters as that user information. That should trigger an entry in your access logs on your own web server. You can modify some information that the logged in user is able to modify, like probably their email address, for example, or their address or something like that, making it easier to actually um, socially engineer those people. Again, think outside of the box here. Um, do your thing, you're a hacker. I know you're freaking amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching the whole thing through. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye amazing hacker.